I got some bad news today, mostly for myself. I suffered a major injury last week Friday. So what happened? I ripped off the ligament of my left pec muscle. So the attachment of my pec to my arm. Now, how did it happen? I had an underhook from half guard and the guy really exploded frantically with his hip inside. And basically, well, this happened to my shoulder and the ligament tore off. So I'm gonna need surgery somewhere in the course of next week. So uh, it, it will happen. So that's how it happened. Now, why did it happen? There's a few reasons why it happened. So first of all, I'm gonna put, there's two blames here. The blame is 50% on me and 50% of my opponent. What is the 50% of my opponent? My opponent went very explosive and explosively tried to move my body, like my joint. It's the same thing as, for example, I grab someone's wrist, uh, someone's collar, and someone's smashing your elbow. Well, it's technically allowed, I suppose, but, but no. So every time in Jiu-Jitsu, when you try to explosively move your opponent, especially on a joint, you risk damage if the person reacts slow. So that is that part on that side. Now, what is my 50% of responsibility? Well, first off, I trained that day. I did fitness that day. I was pretty tired before, the, before I come in. So that's not a problem by itself, but it's one factor. Secondly, I know the guy I competed with was uh, a young competitor. So I should not have gone into the pace. I should have, like I was preaching on everything. Yeah? So I say I should have uh, calmed down and not trying to go into that game. Third, it happened the last five seconds, well, obviously the last round, <laughs> it was planned to be the last round in, uh, in any case. So that happened also, <clears throat> because I was already tired, see, I was in a weak spot, and it's just two bad instances that happened to collide at the, at the same moment. Now, what did I do so far? So, because what my plan now, what I'm going to do, with, uh, I'm going to make, so it's going to have some inf influence on the channel. First off, I will not be able to demo as much as possible. This week I was still able to film and teach my class and, dem and do demonstrations. But once I got the cut for at least six weeks, I will be in a, like, like a carrier. Yeah? So then it will be harder. Maybe I film some other people and, and show them, let them do it and give an explanation to that. That's an option. And I still have some, pl some stuff filmed which I will bring out. But on, what I'm also gonna do now, so it's also an opportunity for new things. So since I'm always preaching levity and always talking about, about that, and injuries still happen even if you try to roll safe most of the time, yeah. So even then, I'm gonna try to show you how I get back to being myself, you know. So I'm gonna put a, make a playlist here. This video is the first in this playlist. So bad news, injury, and the, ro the road to recovery is gonna be the name of the playlist. The road to recovery, yeah. So, what's gonna, so what happened so far? What is the process? What did I already do? pre-surgery now to improve my chances of healing. First off, I was really pissed. The day it happened, I was calm to my opponent, the, 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 my training partner, the guy who did it. I was calm, I didn't get pissed, although I was pissed, but it doesn't help anything in the moment, so I didn't scream, <laughs> didn't yell, just, okay, leave me alone for a second and let me see what happened. So then I went straight away, yeah? I went into emergencies, had my photos, I always go to emergency, because in emergencies, they take a long time, it doesn't really useful, but it can take a long time before they start to help you. Yeah? So I went to emergencies to get the ball rolling straight away. Now first, the first three days, two days actually, I was really pissed. I was angry at the world, angry at everybody. Yeah? And so I just waste some time there, like a day or two, being angry with myself. And then I snap out of it and then I say, okay, let's get to work. So the, the thing I did happened on a Friday, so Saturday and Sunday, hospitals are closed in Belgium. So I went to emergencies and I took an RX, a radio. A radio is not useful for bone, so I already know that. But they always do this on, in uh, emergencies. They take our RX first, and then I play from an echo. And the echo also never is visible. So what I did straight away was call myself on Monday morning as soon as possible. I called get a MRI without having a prescription for a doctor. So I already planned my MRI, and then I make sure I got the inscription. So I've been a few days there. They do this, and now they plan the surgery. So that's my what, I, what I'm. Um, but in the first part. Secondly, what are the major problems right now for me as, a, as an athlete, as, a, as a, a teacher? So look, first of all, look, I make sure that I'm not gonna start to lose muscle as good as possible, and at the same time, not to lose much, too much weight. So if I have to make a choice between two, it's better to eat a bit too much and gain more fat than eating not enough and losing all the muscles you have. That is for sure. 
but this being said, you don't want to gain too much weight. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now, I really focus on high protein diet, like fatty fish, I eat mostly herring and mackerel, those two things. Then all he other healthy fats like avocado, um, like hummus. Uh, generally, I uh, try to eat so the, the, the cleanest possible, like avocados, the, pro the, the proteins from the, from the fatty fish. Uh, what else do I eat? I eat lentils, I eat nuts. So all organic food, except the hummus, but I think still that it's healthy. Uh, olive oil, which is also processed, but it's still good. And I try to limit my carb intake. The carbs that I do eat is like carrots, paprika, um, what else? Some, um, uh, the, the sweet potato I eat. So mostly all of my carbs now come from clean carbs. So I don't want any, any bread. I'll try to limit rice, no pasta. So I try to limit, uh, certainly no chocolate and, and sugar. So I try to limit all the processed sugars uh, and, and eat as clean as possible. So that, of course, it, it makes you feel better. It limits inflammation. Ginger and turmeric I also eat. Limits inflammation. And at the, and on the same time, it also allows me to keep my muscle a bit and not to gain too much weight. On top of that, I still do my fasting because my fasting allows me, because when you're in a fasted state, you burn more calories. Yeah. So also at the same time, I make, sh make sure that I'm not going to gain too much weight, but at the same time, still eating around my 2,000, 2,200 calories a day. I will see a bit how I go up and down. Then also, I try to keep as active as possible. So I still did some rolling, having my elbow inside, tucking it in, and just only go with those people at 100% trust, and just exchange some push-pull energy. Eh? And whenever I they go slow, whenever I get in a tough spot, okay, stop, let's reset. So you have to load now absolutely without any ego whatsoever. The most important thing is to keep sweating for me now and not lose all the drive. Also, once I'm gonna be injured completely about, because of the surgery, I'm still gonna be on the mat every single day as a teacher, but also because I just want to be, so even if I would not be a teacher, I would also be here all the time just to not lose the habit. Because when I'm here on the mat, having a habit of training, and you're gonna take that away, so you stay home, then and you don't go training, you're gonna replace your healthy training habit with another habit. This might be, okay, maybe you read a book, that's good. Maybe you go, uh, I don't know, go for walks in the forest, that is good routines. But the danger also exists that you're gonna start taking your uh, healthy routine and you're gonna fix it to looking at looking movies, eh? looking at Netflix, um, eating uh, junk food because of boredom. So that's the trick. So you have to keep as active as possible and be with active people if possible in a healthy environment that makes me want to improve. So this is some tip I always give for everybody. Even if you're not a teacher, you're gonna have to do that. Keep a healthy habit and try to go as much as possible still to the mat, even just attending technique, watching technique, helping people out, just watching. For me the challenge is gonna be to learn how to teach um, with other people demonstrating and me giving the explanation from the outside. And at the same time, improving the games too. Because for me, I've always been very feeling based. I feel when something happens and I react to that. So I'm gonna have to see how people react and lose my, and test if my theories, that I always saw as my guiding hand, in the chaos, if they help me to still come up with new techniques and, uh, and explore deeper. So, what else? Ah, at the same time also, I can keep my muscles as active as possible. So for example, for me the worst thing to do, with my, I'm gonna show with my good arm, is to go completely open like that. Yeah. So I avoid this, but at the same time I have to keep, have to keep my muscles active. So I do, for example, uh, wall push-ups, or, or uh, I get, take a bar, very small, and I do standing push-ups very slow like this. I can still do kettlebell swings, do those. I do biceps still, yeah. I don't, I limit overweight, so overhand, this is still possible, so I take like two kilo in each hand, and I go very slow. For example, that. I do, I take uh, the rings, and I lay on, and I stand my feet on the floor, and do pull-ups, so like uh, row, upright rows with the rings, like this. And then legs, I can still mostly do squats with normal weight. Deadlifts, I do with very light, uh, well, not very light, but considerably light, relatively, with uh, two 16 kilo kettlebells, and do my deadlifts like that. See, in those ways, I still keep my muscles want to train. And I'm also doing yoga to keep my mobility as much as possible. So this is gonna be the way I'm gonna do it. In this series, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna show you how I improve over the week, so now you're not gonna hear from me in this, in this, uh, in this series until I did my surgery. Yeah. 
And then after the surgery, I'm going to progress, document my progression and how I heal. If it's not for you, if you're not interested, that's fine. It's still my diary and to keep me sane in uh, those times, yes? Now also, since I'm going to need some projects, you can always give me ideas of things I could do. This can be, I can do, for example, personal coaching through, through, through video. I have a lot of time. I have a lot of time to edit videos now. No time to film, but... So there is, you can give me all kinds of ideas that you want. Eh? And I'm going to see how I can implement them. If there are some topics you want me to talk about without showing, just talk about. I would be very interested to do this as well in this channel. So thank you very much. I hope to be recovered soon and to be able to be with some of you on the mat soon again for some re-rolls. But until then, I'll see you here on YouTube. Take care.